G'day. The other day a friend of mine came in with a lump of steel and a die and said, can you make me one of these? What is it? Well, it's basically a version of one of those. That's a two inch die stock. Um, and this is one, this is a, a, a two inch die holder as well. But this one has a three quarter inch socket on the back. And as uh, this chap, particular chap works in a, uh, an industry where they get things um, hot dip galved, uh, I imagine that uh, the idea is that be able to put a 16 millimeter die in here and just run it down uh, threads that have got a bit of uh, extra zinc build up and all that sort of thing. I'm starting out by uh, facing off the end as is tradition in some channels. Uh, I've also put a slight uh, chamfer there just to break the edge. I don't like cutting myself, but just as a, as a, a tip, I haven't actually got that hard against the chuck here. And the reason for that is that sometimes, particularly when you have a piece of material that's saw cut both ends, they could both be crooked. And so what I tend to do with this sort of stuff is I'll space it out just a little bit, only a, probably two, three millimeters, so that basically the three jaw is centering the, the material face that I can now flip that round and put that against the the chuck face knowing that that is is going to be flat. The inside bore here is not concentric if I started that up you can see that wobble around now on one on, on sorry on both ends I'm going to be counter boring that so that's not going to worry me too much but it also means that for work holding purposes I can't just put a center in there and um, uh, you know, support it that way. This is a little bit thin. Uh, looking at the die holder I've got for this size die, there's there's a decent bit of meat there uh, for the for the screw to go in, um, and so this could be a little thin. I might have to heat shrink some some stuff on there. Uh, and the reason for that is that the the torque on the die is held entirely by these screws, and so you need a, a decent you know anchor for those. Yeah, this particular die stock. I bought at a clearance sale uh, at, a, at a shop. The guy thought he'd never get rid of it. He'd, you know, he'd bought it as part of a display set. Uh, and um, you know, when I came in and, and bought this from him, it was almost tears of joy because he was wondering whether he was going to have this thing sitting there, uh, not doing anything for the rest of his life, you know, up on the wall in the rec room or something. Oh, oh well. Turned the stock round, faced off that end. Once again, broken the edge. I'm just about to start boring here. Now, this is a little bit of a problem just because the die that's going to go in here, this one, is 50 millimeters in diameter. The die stock I've got is marked two inches. So while I could do this so it's, it's a nice and neat fit for a 50 millimeter die, if uh, an older die came up which was actually a two inch die then it wouldn't fit so what I'm going to do is take this out to two inches uh, or smidge over two inches and you know that's that's going to have to be it it'll, it'll float around a little bit not much but um, you know it's always nice to have a, a neater fit with these things um, depth is is not a problem but yeah that diameter uh, is just one of those things you need to think about. If you've only got one die that you're going to be putting into one of these things, then yeah, you can make it, you know, so it's a nice neat fit. If you're going to have multiple, um, then you might want to make it to the to the the old standard, shall we say, uh, just so that uh, if you do go and craft some old dies, they'll fit. I've taken this out to size, and that's all good. The die fits quite nicely. In fact, it's a little bit too loose for my liking, but as I said, that's why it works sometimes. The problem is that on the die stock I've got, there's, an, there's, there's basically 10 to 11 millimeters worth of thickness here. Here, there's only five. So I don't think that's going to be strong enough. Um, you know, it looks like they're trying to get something like two diameters worth of thread here uh, for, the, for the, um, the securing bolts. So what I'm going to do is make up a ring that I'm going to, to shrink fit onto that. And uh, I'm hoping that that will um, just give me some extra meat to, to work on and I can blend that in and, and uh, all the rest of it. So I've cleaned up the outside in anticipation of that. So I've got a nice um, smooth and concentric surf surface. I now need to make up a ring to give myself another five millimeters on the, on the diameter here. 
This bit of rusty crusty stuff here is what I'm going to be making my sleeve out of. I haven't got anything about the right size. Uh, this is 100 millimeters. I wish it was a little bit uh, smaller. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a through hole and then put a do the rest of the bore as a step. Uh, the reason for that being I can then heat this up, drop that onto my lump of steel and that'll, that fingers crossed will settle down on that. Um, this is just another piece of mystery metal to match the mystery metal the die holder is being made out of. I've taken a, a whole lot of material off this lump of steel. Um, the reason being that the only real heat source I've got for doing this sort of thing is my map torch and so the less material I've got to heat up the better. I just haven't got the capacity to, to do more. One thing though that uh, did occur while I was doing this, I noticed the finish on here isn't all that wonderful. Now that doesn't worry too much for this application because it's going to be hidden and a, and a bit of, um, should we say, you know, some grooves will help lock things in. But if I get that sort of finish one of the first things I think about is changing the tip on the on the uh, the, the tool. In this case, the boring bar, uh, because it could mean that the, the tip is just not quite behaving itself. I've I've run my finger over the the tip, run my fingernail over, and I can't feel any nicks or anything like that. But I'm going to try swapping it, and we'll see what the uh, the change is. Slightly better, not not a um, a quantum leap, but. It's one of those things that when I when I see a, a deterioration of surface finish, when I've got inserts throwing sparks, uh, when the lathe gets bogged down on a, what should be a reasonable cut, um, first thing I look at is the uh, the insert. I'm ready to do my um, heat and, and shrink. Uh, my friend Phil said that the rule of thumb is two thou per inch of diameter for um, a, a thermal fit and one thou per inch of diameter for, for a press fit. Now this is uh, 2,000 smaller so it doesn't fit on there yet but I'm hoping with a bit of heat that'll do that. I've got it set up in the in the press here because if this thing hangs up I'm in strife so uh, the plan is to get it going on there and if it drops on beautifully well that's really nice and if it doesn't then I'll just have to try and force it on and, and hopefully be quick enough to, to get it on before it, uh, it locks up. Uh, some people say oh, I'll put that in the fridge or in the freezer. Yeah you could but um, I've then got to negotiate with um, the uh, the inside government and, and I don't know whether having lumps of metal sitting in the freezer would be a really you know good idea. On the bottom here I've bored out the uh, hole for the socket. Uh, that one's just going to hopefully just press in there and once I've got that I can run a bead of weld around there. Um, with the the expanded flange here I may have to do something uh, with that but we'll just have to, to see how that all works out. That went surprisingly well. The um, socket here, uh, nice press fit in, and I'm going to go around with a, um, a bead of weld just to, to lock that in. The uh, thermal fit down the bottom, uh, I probably, in hindsight, I probably could have gone uh, a little bit more interference. Fourth hour is only 0.1 of a millimeter, uh, and the way that slipped on, I probably could have done, um, you know, something like six or something like that. But it uh, doesn't matter. It's done. I'm now going to. I just said weld that up, then I'll put this back on the uh, on the lathe, thin this down a little bit, thin this down a little bit, uh, not so much the diameter but the, uh, the, the bottom, take the lip off and um, maybe shorten this a little bit uh, and I'll see about putting a bit of weld around there too, I don't know about that one just yet. There's my welded uh, assembly, so I'm just going to grab that in the three jaw and, and clean this bit up, shorten that back a bit. 
uh, take that down to size. Then I'm going to grab it by the socket, uh, use a pipe center in the end there, which is why I cleaned that up, and just take a little bit of material off, clean up the outside a bit and all that sort of thing. There's the turning done. So I've just taken a bit of material off there to, to lighten it up. I was going to uh, weld my, my shrink fit piece in, but I can, I can just pick a, a line there and I can just pick a line there. So I think I'll leave it um, because I'll have screws going through here, which will stop the, the two parts rotating relative to each other. So it, it should be right and uh, the person that's destined as a welder, if they, if they feel a bit uneasy, they can always run a bead around there if they want to. Uh, so all I have to do now is put in the tapped holes uh, to hold the die in. Uh, so that means over to the mill and the dividing head. The last thing I need to do is put in some holes for, well, securing screws, whether they be grub screws or, or headed screws, uh, to locate in the dimples on the, on the die. Now, depending on what dies you have, um, they can have them there and there and there, or they can have them here and here, or there and there and there and there and there, or uh, all sorts. So I'm going to put five holes in here, uh, spaced 45 degrees round, and that'll that'll be good. This stack of stuff here is purely because I've got this hanging out the front of the dividing head, and I just want something to um, support that so that the, I'm not pushing the thing out of the drill. So uh, I've centered that, I've pushed that back the right amount, I've got a five millimeter drill there for a six millimeter M6 tapped hole. Uh, I'll uh, drill those and then I'll come over here and uh, using the tapping arm I'll put the uh, put the tapped holes in. To finish this off I'm just tapping the holes with the uh, with an M6 tap. I'm using my tapping arm it's invaluable for trying to, to, to find things that are square to a surface so um, you know that's all good. Uh, unfortunately I can't try this out because I don't have a three-quarter inch um, Square, square drive socket so although I can try the die in there and that's that or I already know that fits uh, I can't try it out so uh, that's about the end of the video thanks for watching and uh, see you for the next one